this is my girl's morning cat food and coffee. Thank Our goodness coffee for the coffee. Up. Yeah. Thank well, you, Nani. You're welcome, pretty thing. Don't know if you can see or not, but my daffodils are up and they have a flower head on them. And um, the quince is starting to make its flowers. Hey, girls. Everybody's waiting for Donnie. And Donnie's morning starts with coffee, the newspaper, and a unicycle ride. Yeah, trying to, to hatch an egg. Trying to hatch an egg at Pokemon Go for me? Aww. That's right. Don and I were up to after 2 a.m. Yeah. And that's partly because we did a three-hour analysis on what dishwasher we should buy. I mean, right. we were doing other stuff, but we were also mostly looking right. at... Don had the nerve to pull up Consumer Reports. I just just right. because of the Tesla hate from over there, right. in my opinion. But anyway. Right. Well, when we were at Home Depot looking at the dishwashers, we looked at the various ones. And one of the ones we did look at at Bosch. And, he, and I didn't spend a lot of time looking at Bosch because the buttons are mechanical buttons. And you could get crap in them. They're raised. Well, they're, and the ones that were, now I'm, uh, Bosch makes a hundred different types of panel designs and stuff. The ones that were on in floor at Home Depot, all the buttons were across the top, not on the front, but across the top edge uh, that goes underneath the counter. And this dishwasher, this Samsung, has those same kind of buttons, but they're touch. But that top thing, because you're pulling on it constantly, because we don't use the bar. Oh no, we would use the bar. We has a nice bar on the front of this. Well, that's because it's rarely closed. Right. Well, the point is that it gets all this crap on those, and it's like I looked at those buttons. This is going to fill up with crap, and then I'm going to be in there cleaning the buttons out. So I I didn't spend much time looking at Bosch. I just simply moved on. I don't like. If I had my drugs, I swear to God, I'd rather have the timer. But you know that ship sailed on. You know the days of me being able to have just a simple timer. I don't want a single transistor in the in the thing, or certainly God don't give me a hundred million transmis, transistors on a microchip. I don't want that in my dishwasher. I want lots of scrubbing brushes. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I went to Consumer Reports and looked uh, because my brother recommended that we buy a Bosch and uh, or look at Bosch. Um, yeah, Don had his finger on the press the order I, I button literally had when I read the comment from JB. That's right. So we went out there and because I do have an electronic subscription to Consumer Reports, went out there and looked at the reviews and they, they basically rated Bosch very high. And if you, uh, they also talked about their annual spring and fall survey at Consumer Reports where they surveyed like 113,000 members. So these are people who's, who have paid Consumer Reports, you know, the 20 bucks a year or the subscription. So they survey their members and they send back feedback. And one of the things they've sent feedback on on our dishwashers is apparently pretty big. They had 113,000 people. Right. Well, Consumer Reports statistically comes up and says Bosch reliability is a 10 out of 10. The Samsung is a 2 out of 10, and I would agree with that. Right. Samsung. I don't know about the 10 out of 10, but the 2 out of 10, I can, I can relate right. to that. Other Samsung products may be all well and good, but the particular dishwasher we have for us is horrible. Don has to service it every two months. Right. Something clogs up, plugs up, something. Electronics that, that, now. Oh, God, yes. Uh, anyway, well, the LG was 5 out of 10, which is middle of the road, middling at best. Well, anyway, to speed this whole thing up. Then I go and we start zeroing in on a couple of these Bosch because we want a third rack. So the Series 100 Bosch is about $670. And the 800 is about $900. $900. And the 300 is a little over, is like 1001 Yeah. It, uh, so we zero in on these. And then we start reading the comments on Consumer Reports, where, again, that are posted by Consumer Reports members. Verified buyers like Amazon. Yeah. yeah. And they said, my God, what did, I bought this dish, dishwasher based on your liability, and it leaks, it doesn't clean, I can't get my dishes in it. They don't dry anything. They don't dry. 
it's like one of them had 76 reviews and 35 of them of the people said I wouldn't recommend this dishwasher for the uh, industry so it's like God almighty so finish up this story I'm getting really long winded here JB responded this morning uh, to uh, a little bit more detail and he said and I love JB you know he hit it right on the head and he said uh, uh, good luck on whatever you buy because I think dishwashers are a hit and miss product on reliability after reading lots of reviews and it doesn't seem to matter what you pay for them and I guess I'm coming to the conclusion is I don't know now what I'm going to do I mean because it, it's a total crapshoot what you buy right well I want the LG one because I got sold on the steam, true steam the light the recessed left side of the third row rack um there's something else it does um that i really liked it does have folding tines on the, the extra ball bearings for a better glide on the i mean i'm sold i've drank the kool-aid i like the lg and My girl, uh she she likes gadgety well and look and wi-fi oh we can ask a about it oh, God. yes <laughs> so don and i agreed last you know night how many microchips must be in this thing they but you are capable bonus. of paying $200 for a control board and throwing it in if we have to. Now, if I was married to somebody else, that would be a more of a concern. But with you, it's not a concern. I suppose. Although that control board that got replaced in my stove was a $400 control power. When you were looking to fix the old refrigerator, those control boards are pretty pricey if you have to go buy one. Right. Well, Unless somebody's pulled one on, put it on eBay out of a machine they pulled it out of. The right. brand new ones are really pricey. But I would also say that um, it's been my experience the control boards themselves aren't really the problem. It's it's the sensors. Right. Well, my old stove at the the stove that we have here that came from the old house, lightning caused the control board right. to get well, fried. Certainly, lightning can do that. Lightning. Yeah. So we agreed we'll go up and we'll look one more We're time. Go look some more. Yeah, we're going to look one, because we didn't pay attention to the Bosch, because Donnie said, I don't like those buttons on that's top, and we right. kept going. That's right. Yeah, the one on the LG is very smooth. Nothing can get down in right. there. Yeah. Right. I mean, so like, we'll see. We'll let you know later today. You'll see. We'll fig we're will we going to go sort it out. Yep. It's wet out there. We had over two inches of rain last night. Yep. The temps are okay, but the ground is soggy. Yep. So, um, Don was having a conversation with Kyle about a spec motoring in the comments to his, right. I'm getting ready to make a cross country road trip video right. Yep, good video. about how do you keep from incruing, um, is that the right word? Incurring, in yeah. incurring, uh, charging idle fees. If you fall asleep at the charger, if you're taking a nap and the car gets to hundred percent and of course the charger is over half, the charging right. station is over half full. Which had us looking in Teslify at what kinds of notifications you can get. Right. And then I had the Stats app installed for Ruby, but I had stopped using it, turned it off, made it go away. We also were looking there, and I guess there was one other app you looked at. Remote for Tesla. Yeah, we were looking to see if any of them had a way to send yourself a notification when the car gets to honk the horn or something that would actually wake you up so you would know you needed to go move the car well an example we were at rocky mount what day new year's eve and remember it stopped charging and we didn't know we were in we the car know. we were sitting in the car banging away on our phones and it stopped charging and i happened to look up and it, we weren't at the, enough of a pad that i wanted to leave yet and so I'll, i got out and unplugged and re uh Yep. And started charging back up. So I would have liked to have the horn honk or something to kind of say, hey, I stopped charging. Either because it's complete or it was interrupted. Even a chime inside the car right. that you could something. choose to turn on or off. So outside people don't hear it, but well, people in the car do. Of course, if it was a full-blown alarm on the phone, little notification thing... My phone sound, oh, my aunt's phone sounds like a pinball machine, so notifications <laughs> don't do anything. I mean, I just ignore my phone when it beeps. Uh, I don't care anything about it. But now if it 
actual alarm goes off, I notice. Well, maybe there's a widget for the phone where you could intercept certain notifications and either Make Android them. or Apple will do something Escalate with that. Escalate them. Escalate them. Let's, maybe yeah. you and I can research that yeah. next because we have all the technology. We have Android and iOS. Yeah. We can look from both, right. um, both perspectives. But, uh, yeah, so we reevaluated... F f uh, what notifications Teslify is sending, and I enabled right. a few. Like we're not, we shouldn't get caught off guard that the car is not logging to Teslify because I've turned on an SMS message. If it doesn't log for an hour, let me know. Right now, when it's at the service center, that's going to be annoying. Right. But, yeah. but when it's home, that should never happen. Right. So that we shouldn't lose. Right. Well, we data again. Right. We don't really know. We happened to notice on New Year's Day that we didn't have any charging records. So that was the first time that we've... Driving. Made... I didn't have a driving record. Yeah. I went out during the day and there was no drive. And we rebooted Ruby and uh, it started logging again. But uh, the thing about Tesla Fi, if it's, if it's not talking to uh, logging, you don't, you don't lose it. In other words, there's no, there's no uh, buffer on the car that you know for the last uh, eight hours that Tesla Fi uses it, it's real time. It pings the car every minute or periodically and says what's new and gathers the data that aggregates the data up to form useful information and uh, which is great but the problem is if you're out of range or the car's not lo uh, talking to Tesla on the internet, it's not on the internet, then you, you lose data. Right. Well, I always, people ask me, well, why Tesla Fi or I guess maybe some of these other apps too. And the answer is, is because if you look in the Tesla app, you just get real time information. That's right. And Tesla Fi and maybe some of these other apps, they ping the car, save the information, and then you That's can see right. a history. That's right. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Like where were we New Year's a year ago? We could go look in Tesla Fi and it would tell us a lot of information. Right. And if you don't, well, this is where at Log some it, you level lose it. the we got that uh, OBD2 uh, scan my Tesla, and of course it's it's doing real time data, but uh, and it has trips and stuff like that, but you know not the nice presentation that Tesla Fi's got with the map and all that. But I guess what I'm saying is this is where it's nice that if there was be some data logger uh, or f with a some filtering on it so you, you, you don't get all the little dot all the little I don't care what my air pressure was uh, you know all these other things that come flowing over the interface but just focus on the trip uh, would log that that way uh, that always works and it doesn't depend on the Wi-Fi or cell phone or anything like that but that's kind of over time I mean, your car it, 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 it does what it needs to do. I mean, you're not having that stuff. Well, I guess I'd like the ODB2 stuff to work a little bit like the Ring doorbell. I'd like it to save data for a day or two, and I've got a chance to go pull yeah. it if I care about it. And if I don't pull it within a day or two, since well, that's potentially a lot of data, it can just toss it. the same way, right? Yep. Sentry mode logs events. And it rolls over. And it rolls over. And so if you don't go out there... If you know, all of a sudden you're watching the car and you see a big gash in the car, you want to go back and look at sentry mode to see if it caught something. Because, you know, knowing that I had 15 events doesn't mean anything when the 15 events were people walked by the car. Right. Yeah, well, it's a hard line with that sentry mode to get everything that you would care about and not get so much stuff that you don't care about that you can't find right. the one thing that you do. And I appreciate that that's a hard right. Uh, line yeah. to draw there with what's the right amount of logging, but, but um, 32 gig uh, cards can log. I mean, for months uh, right. before they roll around. So I guess I'm just going to make a suggestion that if you have Tesla Fi, or if you have the Stats app, or you have that other remote one for remote for Tesla, or anything else hooked up, that you go in and you review the notifications that it's sending, and just make sure you have your settings where you want them to be. Is the kilowatt per hour that you're paying for electricity still accurate right. is uh, the current cost of gas per gallon which here is fluctuates 30 or 40 cents and right now is a little higher uh, i guess it, there was an article it might have gone up based on uh, this thing. latest stuff in the news you should just take a minute because it's the new year to go in and yeah. make sure your settings are right for the new year because yeah. i just did that yeah. and it seems like a good idea to remind other yeah. folks Before it's it only this be february right it's only the third you haven't missed too many days um you know maybe yeah. uh, if you didn't 
get Tesla Fi, but you were thinking about it, or the Stats app, and you, it would be a great time to start. It's not too late. You haven't really lost right. any appreciable amount of data, unless, of course, you drove to California yeah. and back in the last two days, yeah. Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be a good time, good time to consider that. Um, Tesla Fi gives you a seven-day trial, but you can get a longer trial. Uh, and I think we get $5 off our cost next year if you use our Tesla referral code, Donald8803, on the Tesla Fi uh, code. It's this, We said it, you can make it what you want, and I said it the same. It's Donald8803 80, yeah. for Tesla and for Tesla Fi. Yeah, I think you get an extra week free or something. Yeah, instead maybe you get 30 days, days instead yeah, of 7 or 14. You get more free trial time. Yeah, you make So you could try it for free longer. Right. Um and then if you sign up we get $5 off of next year's oh, annual fee. Yes, okay. that's how that works. I did not. Know yes. That. Of course it's not that expensive to begin with, right. but um every little bit. Every little bit. Helps. That's right. The day has uh, fully recovered. It's in the mid 60s. It's sunny. Um, beautiful Carolina sky up there. It's great. We're headed to Home Depot. Don's waiting for me now. He'll get the gist. I'm on the other side of the car this time. Wow, the sky is just super pretty as the storm clouds dissipate and the uh, nicer, um, clearer weather pattern comes in. It's 65 out there. It's nice to be out in Ruby for a few minutes just to look at the sky, never mind anything else. You better be careful with my plates. Yeah, we You'll got, be in trouble. We've got the snowman dish and the uh, Santa Claus. Yeah, dish. serious. You got, you know, you'll be in trouble. So we're just over here checking after Christmas prices, and the price for the Ryobi vacuum has um, really gone up. It was as low, we think, as $179.99. Yeah. yeah, the uh, Ryobi stick vac, um, you, they have it with. Uh, amp and a half or two amp hour battery and they had it with a four amp hour battery and they had the tool only but basically at 179 dollars which is what i got the tool for included a four amp hour battery a big battery and in fact the big the four amp hour battery is actually kind of heavy uh to maneuver around so i swapped it out with a two amp hour battery that i had and i'm using the four amp hour out in the garage Except so, for I may want the four amp right. hour back well, in the house. Well, we may pick up one here today. Um, the they new have kind. a three amp hour battery, and that might be the sweet spot for weight versus length. Right. Plus, this Run is time. a um, brushless motor. It's brushless, and on the back, it has two additional contacts. And their new batteries make That's use right. of those right. contacts. And there's always been one or two contacts on the front, but this battery, that, which is the four amp hour battery, is not the plus lithium plus HP. Lithium plus HP. The lithium plus HP are specifically designed for the brushless motors. And they have two additional contacts on the back on the round part this rounded edge of the battery, they have two little contacts here, which go right here. So this tool is brushless, and if you have the brush, it basically use the lithium HP, uh, a lithium plus HP with a brushless tool, it almost doubles the battery life of the tool because the battery and the tool communicate. So if we buy a three amp hour battery, I will make sure it's the new kind. It's the new kind of battery. Yeah, we discovered that when we were here two days ago. Right. Right. We were looking we always look at the Ryobi I display was and at the nine nine amp hour battery. <laughs> More power. And it had a, quite a big amount of data on it. it started and it talked about this is the uh, 
Lithium Plus HP specifically designed for brushless tools. And it says the HP is for the brushless tools and it basically increases the life, uh, battery life, because like I said, the tool and the battery talk to each other. Don's liking the separation on some of that stuff. Yeah, the, depending on these have plates it. have a dish. And she, <clears throat> she has about half, a third of her dinner plates are this top style. The majority of them are the flat corral. This is almost all of that, but the, some of her plates have this kind of. So mold. that's why they were close together. We didn't bring two of the flat ones. Right. Well, we have lots of these up in the attic. Attic. But well, we don't have a second flat one. I'm sure right. they would have stacked okay. Right. But well, if you do it this way, the gap better. looks pretty good. Yeah. But if you swap it around and do it this way. Gap looks a little tight, but I think it probably could clean in that, that gap. I think you'd end up having to put four or five on the there at the back where those tines are big and four or five on the bottom. I don't think you're going to get them. I don't think you'd get them all up top or all bottom. Yeah, but if they can hold 10, that's all that's important. Right. So the third rack doesn't come out as easy. Well, it comes out pretty easy, but it doesn't go back as easy as the Bosch. Like the Bosch one's really designed to come out and go back in. Right. I mean, Don, I guess he thinks we're going to load flatware on the top. I'm still thinking we're putting flatware in a basket, but. The, the Bosch one, see, I'm, I can't. Yeah. You've got to. It's I got it hooked. More difficult. Yeah, see, I literally having to hold this. I mean, it might be smoother once it's in there, possibly, but it, yeah, the well, in I don't and out think part is not, not really happening. Yeah, well, I don't know that you can get, well, maybe, see, you can't, you can't get it, it won't, it doesn't go up high enough to clear that thing, so that's the definite, because um, the point is, you, you know, if you, you have this full of silverware, I guess you could just grab a hand. See, I'm not seeing filling it with silverware. I'm only seeing it putting ladles and spatulas and scrapers and other stuff up there. I'm not seeing using it for silverware, but you are. Maybe. Right. I think it's much easier to move up and down or those little thumb swells on the side there. For me, my hands, it was easier. So um, this one has got, I like this area here. It's really not quite big enough though for a, a pan or a pot. Um, most of, we have a couple sauces that are that small, but the one I'm thinking about, it doesn't, doesn't do what, I don't know that it's going to do good there. Right, but we can't look at the one we were going to order. They don't have it here. That's right. And really, necessarily, they may not have the Bosch we were going to order either. Right, that's true. And um, this is um, the bowls up top. Do here they both. fit in the front too? Just curious. Yeah, they, yeah, like they could go either way up there. Well, they actually. Yeah, they're they're both they're those tines go in opposite directions. Right. But I'm just saying we can fit a lot more of those up top on this particular I shelf. Agree. We could get more of these up on this machine. In fact, we have more more than enough of these. And they don't interfere with each other side yeah. to side. So Don that, needed to know how the raise and lower of the rack thing worked. Right. So it has three positions. When you push this thing here, this this part moves up and down. There's three positions, but there's a fixed knob um, yep. pipe on the rear. Yep. yep. But it does have a, a camming effect, and so those these these things right here cause those two to line up, and that nozzle will go into one of these three holes. Yep. And then there's flaps here. Well, that's like how a, the water's getting to the thing. Right. Yeah. But there's there's like these are like reeds. So the, whenever the pressure, they push out and they will seal around here so the water doesn't come out here and therefore it has to come out through the wand. These, these bowls give our current dishwasher at home fits. We have to do every other one. You know, Johnny and I, we pick whatever bowls we can pick to give you the most grief. Okay. I'm just kidding. 
Johnny and I just don't like our food to slide off the plate. Right, but th these bowls go in well. These have a real, these are pain too because they fall over. But they only come out once a year. Yeah, but we don't have a lot of these. For two months, you know, these, we don't. These bowls stay out pretty much year round. Yep. But again, that works well. And then you have your plate. Obviously, you probably want to end up having to leave a space between there. So, I would, I, I, other than these, I would say this one does the plates really well. How about in the front? In the front. In case we put the bottom tines down and we do it in the back. Can we have the same good experience in the front? I'd say, say we can, and we're even mixing the two different styles, which was Don's whole point. And even, yeah, this one does a really good job. Really good job. I would say that's 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 excellent. Yeah, I don't think you could get any better spacing than that. Right, I agree. I think that's. Yeah, excellent. I really like that. Uh, that's very stout, right. heavy duty. Um, Lots of silver. I mean, we don't, we don't, we only have four. We have a third. We only have right. Two that thirds. one has six. This one has cubbies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and this one is big. The other one that one of the problems that we have is when stuff gets down in the bottom, the only way to get it out is to turn it upside down. Yep. And of course, um, this one you can actually get your hand down in all the way in it. It's, that's kind of how I buy glasses. You drink out of. Yeah. If you can't, you can't get your, get your hand, hand in inside here, the glass, if don't you drop buy something it. Something in, in this compartment or that compartment because we have these. We have lids. caps and lids. Caps. Yeah. That will fall through the cracks. Yeah. So we put the caps and the lids in this thing so they don't fall. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, um, I'm going to get, look, I like the Bosch. We're going to go back and look at the Bosch again, right, but. but this, I'm giving the, um, the loading in the. The basket. The basket. On uh, the uh, LG better. Better. So and maybe on. dish placement too. Yeah. The fact that this is a fixed rack, but the only thing she. Right. Well, we've got one that we were looking at that the rack moves a little bit. That's right. Yeah, um, this is just the lower end right. model. Right, well this is where you stick the spatula and the, the problem, concern I have about this one is these things, these don't move. On one of them, the, these things fold over yeah. and that's really tight and that's great for knives, but Kitten's got fat spatula handles and things like Notice that. Notice how he's blaming me. Well, well I, don't, I don't even know if I own the spatula. Um, you owned a spatula, you cooked eggs. Oh, we right, talking about flipper. the yeah, flipper? Yeah, I was talking about the, the thing that wipes out the bowl. The scraper. Scrapers. I don't know. The silicone yeah, yeah, yeah. bowl I scraper. Don't I don't know what the official word for that know, kitchen tool is. The thing is you actually. spread icing with. Right. <laughs> Don's thinking sugar. <laughs> All right. See, Don would oh, never have to give me grief about my Corel again. Like, you know, it's too curved. It's not. You'd be surprised yeah. that the man that does the dishes bowls. has lots of feedback on the bowls it's that the like wife uses. We only have so much room in our dishwasher. For and three we people. Have to put every other space for these kinds of because it has that thing that causes a problem. This is why we don't have stoneware because Don was a firm no. The dishwashers over there don't have the print proof technology, but these refrigerators do, and it's a big difference. Like if you touch the front of those dishwashers over there, you got to give it the real. Oh test. no 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 <laughs> no! That's too much guy information. <laughs> anyway, uh, Don and I think the print proof on the LG is worth the fifty dollar premium. So they don't have the LG one that I want in store, but we think we researched it enough that we go home and order it. Yay! Right. Yeah. Don sold on the racks, you'd be surprised it's really the rack thing that, um, where you can put the big pots in. And I, of course, like everything about the LG better. So it'll be interesting though, because his brother just got a brand new Bosch and we'll be getting a brand new LG and we can have a race to see who has the least problems with their brand new dishwasher. Yeah, not to mention the one my sweetie's getting has Wi-Fi and all that other and stuff. And light in it oh, and all that, that good stuff. All that yeah. good stuff. I like complicated, I like stuff. I was really, you know, geeking out on the knob on that timer model. Just Don turn one knob. For him, it's not the two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. It's really just which one will give him trouble well, that's sooner right. than later. So right. I'm happy.
Yeah, and it's nice if you can buy a extended warranty, but it doesn't help if it takes three days or four days. I mean, you know, it breaks. It's like uh, dishwasher breaking is a is an emergency. I'm happy until Don's not happy anyway. I don't want him having. I mean, he has to futz with that other one all the time, and I need for him not to be having to deal with. It. I got other projects besides let's spend an hour taking the dishwasher apart again. Right. The manual. Mm. Right. The Bosch units really want you to use Finnish products, F-I-N-I-S-H. And, um, you know, there were complaints about the Bosch right. not drying, especially plastics, but really everything well. And apparently, you know, quote unquote, the right finishing agent will do the trick. And Don knows with the Samsung, if you let the rinse agent go empty, it takes a lot longer to run the cycle, a lot longer. You don't want that. It's over three hours or something. So. Um, we, we, we don't see a recommendation from LG, but we will go and read. Yeah, we'll read up on that. He's gonna buy a battery. Yeah, I'm gonna buy a battery. So which one are you buying? I'm buying the nine amp hour. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I could vacuum our house, the neighbor's house, and maybe one more down the street. If you look back here, you see the two little tack, two little silver things yep. on the lithium HP. P. Right. Which talks to the tools that have the brushless motor. Right. So the battery lasts longer. But again, See, I heard what he them, said earlier. You can use them. But <laughs> the thing is, this is the um, three amp, four amp hour battery. It's sixty nine dollars. Or you can get the nine amp hour battery for eighty nine dollars. Eighty nine dollars. More power. More power. Or you can get, these are not HP, these are just the two amp hour batteries, and they're $89. Two for $89. Uh, I'm going to get this. Yep, I hear you. And the reason, the reason I'm going to get this is, is this humongous. Um, it worked good on my chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, if I ever get like the circular saw or something like that. Okay. So we're going to... I Try it. Can't pass up it. I don't know. Yeah, why it's that cheap. Yeah, and we the lady scanned it and she said, yeah, it really. It really is that cheap. So what were you saying right when you went to lock the cart back? Oh, the workshop addicts guys ain't gonna have nothing on me. <laughs> they got them nine amp hour Ryobi batteries, and I got me one now too, baby. <laughs> So according to my phone notifications, it's going to rain in about 15 minutes, but Ruby is not clean and we're going to enjoy driving her since we're going to be without her for a few days. So um, no bad weather, just dark clouds. So we're not too stressed about it. Um, thanks for all the new people with us that have um, subscribed within the last week or two. Really appreciate that. We are really close to a milestone. I don't talk about uh, stuff like that very often if at all I do this as a um, labor of love making the videos every day which costs me at least 90 minutes to two hours at night um, editing and on event days five or six hours um, it really is a labor of love I couldn't do it if I didn't love doing it because it does uh, take up a lot of time but thanks for those that have joined recently I, I'm really appreciative even if I'm not talking about it a lot behind the scenes you know we're a family channel a tesla channel and a technology channel so i was telling don that you know all the dishwasher stuff today falls under the technology ch category we certainly talk, try to talk about all sorts of electronic and geeky gadgets and stuff like that and um yeah today was a uh, dishwasher 101 i guess so autovox sent us a new camera yeah. only took you know oh that's great it's pointing at me hi uh, only took a day a day or two to come. It was really quick. Came from Amazon and yeah. um, this camera works. And the display and the transmitter. In other words, this wireless transmitter is transmitting to the antenna. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, receiver in the mirror. And so whenever you, in theory, uh, change your backup lights or uh, whatever, uh, it'll, it'll turn off. Sure. So we should be good to do the install now. Good to do this install. I'm going to pull the camera card for the night because I got some stuff to edit. Don's had his guac, his pork skins, his beer, mm -hmm. and he's got his football game. We've got um, pork ribs in the oven and I'm going to make eggnog ice cream. Yum. So uh, we got to get the last of this holiday food out oh. of the house.